Well, nobody's complaining, so I guess everybody can see it. Okay. The question asks, find the acceleration function and determine the acceleration of object at t is equal to 1. And of course, I don't have the I don't have the picture with me, so we're just going to have to take it because I've that was that group of pictures that I didn't. I'm not going to put it up again. Find the acceleration function, and you probably look in your book. There's probably a question like this one because it has. I used examples out of an old book and <laughs> determine. The acceleration of the object at t is equal to 1, and they give you v of t is equal to negative 2t plus 4. Now, this is important. I want you to understand, and, and I'm talking to those people that have always sucked at calculus, there is V of T. Now, if I want the acceleration, this is why I'm showing you this, I'm going to turn that V of T into V prime of T, but I'm not going to call it V prime of T, I'm going to call it A sub T, and that stands for the what? Acceleration. Acceleration. And you got to remember that. Okay? Yes, I'm taking the, the derivative of V of T, but that changes. When I take the, set, the first derivative of V of T, I'm actually marking that out and changing it to A of T, which means acceleration in regards to time. And, of course, that would be negative 2. And that's going to be 2 feet per second squared. And that's very important that you know that too. Okay? Why is the second squared? Because you're dealing with two dimensions. You're dealing with distance and time. Okay. That's why. I mean, to make a long story short, that's why. Yeah. Okay, and you're also, you're thinking of feet per second, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, feet per second. But when you're talking about acceleration, you're talking about feet per second squared. Okay, now here's another question. The next question is population growth in Washington. Now, again, I'm just teaching you the context of these questions. I don't want you to think you're, you know, building a space shuttle. All right? Population of the state. Population of the state of Washington. In millions. From 2010, t is equal to zero, to 2016, t is equal to six, is modeled by the polynomial. T is equal to 0 0.0078 T squared plus 0 0.028 T plus 6.73. Now, they're going to give you a graph given a graph they're going to ask you to find the average Growth rate. Now, what I tell you, average growth, average growth, average speed. What is that a twenty-five cent word for? 
The what? The slope. Is it the equation for the slope or is it the slope? It's the slope. So this is just algebra. Okay, they're going to give you and they're going to say find the determine the average growth rate from 2010 from 2010 to 2016. And they're going to give you a graph. I didn't I had the graph but I said bump it. After we had a week of problems, I said bump it. All right, so they're going to give you a graph, and it's going to have the years down here at the bottom, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's going to have the populations, blah, 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 up here, okay? Now, what they're trying to get you to do is they're trying to say, okay, we're in, der we're in derivatives now, so we need to do this derivative. Of the no, the average growth rate is just what? The slope. So you got a point here or wherever, and a point, I meant at one, I'm sorry, 2010, yeah, 2010 and 2016. And a point up here, and you got to find the slope. The slope of that line. That curve can be going anything like this right here, but they're wanting you to find the slope. So, at that point, I'll give you the numbers. The numbers for that, and this is where you get it from the graph. I'll just give it to you. 7.1788 minus 6.73 over 6 minus 0. Okay? And that is piece of that's your that's your y sub 2 minus your y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus what? x sub 1. Okay? And again, why am I showing you this? Because I don't want you to feel like, oh, I gotta take the first derivative, I gotta take the first second derivative. No. When they say average growth, average speed, average acceleration, average whatever, when they say average, that's another word for slope. And they're gonna ask you for P prime of T next. So I'm going to erase all this. No. I'm gonna erase this right here. P, this is 2, P prime of T. So what is P prime of T? Well, go ahead and take your calculator, unless you're Rain Man. So that would be, you know, 7 would be point zero one five six. I have no idea. Somebody multiply 2 times 0 0.78. 0 0.0156 T plus point zero two eight. Somebody check me. Yes, sir. Okay. And then they're going to ask you, what is P of 1? P prime of 1, 3. P prime of 1. So what is the growth rate at 2011? And then you're going to plug 1 in there, and somebody take 0 0.0156, add it to 1.028. Do you get 0 0.0436? If you do the 0 0.015 and the 0 0.28, it becomes 0 0.0156 0 0.0 plus 0 0.028. Yeah, that's right should get 0 0.0436 and then now y'all do the fifth one or the next one which is p of 5 p prime of 5 I'll let y'all do that one And that'll be, what, 2015? That's 2011. Oops. And 2015. So what is it? I come out with 0 0.106 million per year. Yep, Point that's it. 0.106 million per year, which is, what, 106,000? 
something like that. So again, you're taking the first derivative, but in this case, you're finding the growth. You're not finding acceleration. And again, why am I doing this? I'm just trying to show you that the different context, the first derivative can give you several different things depending on the context. And the last one is cost. Dang old business calculus. Given the cost function, C of X is equal to negative point zero four X squared plus one hundred X plus 800 for x is less than, greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1,000. So you're talking about the cost of 0 to 1,000 units. A. Find both the, oops, find both the average cost and the marginal cost functions. Now, of course, the marginal cost is going to be your first derivative. Now this is a little bit different. When you find your average cost here, you're going to be doing something a little bit different. The average cost you got to divide. Okay? And what you do when you find the average cost, which is C with a line over it, so average cost is equal to C with a line over it is going to be all of that over X. So C of X over X which is equal to point negative point zero four X squared plus one hundred X plus 800, all each of those over X. And that's going to give you negative 0.04 X plus 100 plus 800 over X. So there's the average cost function. I make a note of that because you will see these questions on the test. You may see one, you may see, I you know, probably take all these questions and put them in a pool, and then it'll be like number 10 on your test, and each person will get a different question pretty much. And now take the first derivative and find your marginal cost. Marginal cost is equal to C prime of X, which is going to be equal to 2 times 4 cent is 8 cent, right? So negative 8 cent, please tell me you didn't punch that in the calculator, X plus 100. And that's your marginal cost. Now, they might go into another part of the question, and you got to plug and chug, basically. So what I'll do is I will highlight this. Really.
Mr. Storms, you must have put those those things that go on the board, you must have put them on the ark or something. They haven't got here yet, or they've got here, they haven't been put on yet. I think that's probably the case. Yeah. Probably got to find out what they are. Oh, shut up, people. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Okay, now the question, I'm going to do this in blue because this is a question they might ask. Determine A. Determine, or I'm sorry, B. Determine the average cost and marginal cost at 500 units, 500 widgets, 500 cars, 500 boxes, 500 rings, 500 stuffed animals, whatever you want to make. So what are you going to do with that 500? Plug and chug. Chug. Thank you. I appreciate the interaction. So the marginal cost is going to be C line of 500 is equal to point negative point zero four times 500 plus okay I done skipped half I no that's right okay plus 100 I thought I was doing the derivative plus 800 over 500 Let's see. Ten percent of five hundred is fifty, right? So one percent of fifty would be five. Five times four is twenty. So that's gonna be negative five twenty. Let me check my math. Negative five twenty plus one hundred plus eight fifths. Somebody check my math on the 500 times. Did somebody check it, or are y'all just going to sit there and be quiet the whole I, time? I got a uh, negative 20. Okay, then I must have I must have added it to it. Oh, I, I did. That's what I did. So it's 20, negative 20. That's what I got, yeah. I added it to it. I did like tax. I'm sorry. Okay, so negative 20 plus 100, that's 80. 80 plus 8 fifths, which is 80. What is 8 fifths? To multiply that by 2, to multiply that by 2, that's 10, 16, 1.6. So that's going to be 80 plus 1.6 is equal to 81.60 cents. Y'all check my math because I don't have a calculator. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, now do your marginal cost. And the marginal cost is basically after 500, what is the, it's going to cost you to make that teddy bear after 500? So marginal cost is going to be C prime of 500 is equal to and where's my derivative? Negative 0 0.08 times 500 plus 100. Well, if 4% is 20, what's 8%? 4 40. 40, yeah, good job. So negative 40 plus 100 is equal to what? Six. So it's going to cost you $60 as soon as you hit that 500, 501, you're going to be, that's what it means. Up to 500 teddy bears, it's going to cost you $81.60 to manufacture 500 teddy bears. After 500, 501 is going to cost you 60 And that's the difference between 
average cost and marginal cost. Capiche? Got it. All right, so let's go to some of the some of the homework questions. And basically, you should be able to handle most of the questions now in the homework as what I've given you, uh, 3.1 through 3. Point, what six, seven, somewhere in there. Are you going to open the homework back up? I thought I did. No, it. Oh, you it got closed it. on the 23rd. Yeah, I thought, I'm so sorry. I thought I opened. You know when you think you did something? I'm sorry. I suck. <laughs> Y'all should fire me. God, I can't even get y'all to talk about me negatively. Y'all suck. <laughs> I can't get y'all to talk about me in a bad way. You guys I, I can't. I can't get y'all to do any damn thing. Not good, not bad, nothing. I know. Y'all just suck. <laughs> Wing on a pickle. I could have swore I did this at home, but evidently I might not have hit save. That might be yet what happened. I could have swore I did the 30th. You know what happened? I got hit on the head by Russians. That's what happened. They came in the house and hit me on the head. Or they didn't hit save. That's what it was. I watched a movie this week. Or the Perfection. Have y'all seen that movie? Mm -mm. That was the dumbest movie I think I've ever seen. Okay. We'll make it the 30th. I'll give you all a few days. That's Bridge to Terabithia. What? That's the dumbest movie. Well, the perfection was pretty stupid. It's about these two celloists that kill it, try to kill each other, basically. <laughs> Okay, now you should be able to get into it. It says the 30th now. I could have hey. swore I thought I did that. Y'all check it and make sure that it opens. Somebody's got a laptop. I work at E. I'll just like. Okay, here's the questions. There's a bad note between them. Ah. What are y'all talking about? If y'all want to talk, include me, okay? We were. Discussing the murderous cellists. Oh, yeah. One cut the one's arm off. It was stupid. <laughs> it does show that it's open till the 30th now. Yeah, you need to you need to Google the perfectionist. Uh, yeah, it was really stupid. Okay, let's look. I don't remember. Did we get 3.3 and 3.4? I think we got 3.4. I think we did. No, wait a minute. I remember doing Miss Rudiger's 3.3. Let me see, Miss Wilson. Let's see. Did we do that one? Did we do this one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we did. We did. Miss Wilson, do you remember doing this one? Um, yeah. Okay. I usually delete them, but I didn't delete them. So let's just see. Let's look at this one. Did I do this one? Let's say more. Yeah. Okay. Mine sent a couple times. Yeah, it does that. I don't know. I don't know if y'all hit the button or you get mad at me or what. I don't know. But it just doesn't say that it's confirmed. Okay. And we did that one as well. Okay. I think we're gonna start at three point four. Yeah, that's the same one. All right, three point four. This says three point four number eighteen. Let me know if we did this one. I think we did that one the other day. Yeah, we did that one with quotation, uh, with quotient rule and with the power rule, yep. uh, with the product rule. We so did we that did on the that 20th. One. And this is, I think this is it. 3.5 number 9 slash 4. Number 4. Okay. Now, when you look at this one, some of y'all may just automatically just what? Quit. Quit. Good job. So what I'll do is we'll take our handy dandy whiteboard and I've already copied it for y'all because I don't have posters and we all, the school is all about posters. 
I don't even know if you can get daggum poster board anymore. That was You're not innovative funny. enough. Don't say anything. Don't say anything, Mr. Sowers. These people ain't going to talk today, <laughs> so you don't need to get beat up. Okay? They ain't going to talk to me. All right. Must be, must be not talk to Hubert Day. Let's piss Hubert off today. He sucks. Okay, write that down, but don't write it down like that because that confuses you. How about f of x equals sine of x plus cosine of x? How about that? Because we like to do things the easy way. We don't, we don't worry about impressing people. f of x is equal to the sine of x plus the cosine of x. Therefore, f prime of x, what is the derivative of the sine of x? Cosine of x. What is the derivative of the cosine of x? Negative sine of x. So, f prime of x is equal to the cosine of x, what? Plus the negative sine of x. Or, or minus sine of x. Okay, so you do the next one. How do I know to do the next one? Because it says yeah. what? So evaluate the second derivative. Second derivative. And I guarantee you some people will look at this question and they'll just stare at it because they don't know what that 2 means. Okay? When you see the 2, that says take the second derivative in respect to x. So what is the derivative of the cosine? Negative sine. And what is the derivative of the sine? Cosine. Cosine, but it's got a minus sign right here, so that's going to be cosine of x. And you actually could factor out a negative 1. I'm going to put or f prime double prime of x is equal to negative 1 times sine of x plus cosine of x. So that's your first derivative and your second derivative. I'm going to just type in three to the problem because I ain't going to type in all that stuff. Now I don't know who sent this problem in, but I can guarantee you they probably knew how to take the derivative, they just didn't know what to do because of the way it was written. So hopefully you feel good about yourself. So write down those answers and let's go back to the question and see what the answer is. <coughs> no clearing your throat in class. I'm oh, sorry. Only thing you do is breathe in here, okay? Got to be hard. Hard and salty. <laughs> there it is. Did we get negative sine of x minus cosine of x? I hope we did. We did. Of course. All right, so hopefully that'll help you out. You hit try again, they'll probably just change it to a minus or it doesn't look like they did anything different there. So that's a good test question. I don't put a lot of I don't put a lot of trig questions on the test. Why? Because what is the derivative of trig? Do you have to do anything or do you just have to memorize? It's just memorize. memorization. Memorize. You just have to memorize. So I'm not going to, I don't, I don't really like testing you on regurgitation skills. I like to see if you know what to do when you're given a problem and how to do it. Okay. 3.5, this is number four. Is that the same one? Yep, same one. Yep. Some people just get happy with that button. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is 3.6, number one. Okay, this is one of those questions that's going to get you, and you ain't, and all it is is basically algebra. Okay? Now, here's the, uh, <clears throat> there's our handy-dandy graph. So go ahead and write that graph down. Go ahead and try to just, just sketch it. It don't take you but a minute to sketch it. Because this is a good test question. 
Why would I give this test question on test? Because I want you to be able to discern whether you need to use math, whether you need to use algebra, or whether you need to use calculus. In this problem, there is no calculus, none. Because what does average mean? <coughs> well, slope. So, it says, determine the average velocity of the bicyclist over the first hour of the trip. Okay, down here, there's hours. See there? Hours. So, I'm going to just I'll move this down just a little bit so you can see. There we go. Hours. Here we go. And I'm going to take a uh, blue marker, and I'm not doing this to insult your intelligence. I'm doing it to show you that they're all they're asking for is the slope. So here is my first, this is a half an hour. Right there, is that what it said? First hour of the trip, so right here. So here's my point. Should you count blocks on this or should you look at the numbers? You better look at the numbers because sometimes they can mess you up with the blocks, okay? So my, this point right here, is zero, zero. And this point right here is one comma what? Eight. So, eight minus zero over zero minus zero, I'm sorry, one minus zero, sorry, one minus zero, is eight over one, which is eight. Because if you do one, two blocks, and one, two, three, four blocks. Four divided by two is two, two miles an hour. And you're going to get it wrong. Find the average velocity, and I want you to do this one. Find the average velocity of the bicyclist over the time interval, one, comma, 2.5. So I'm going to take my red marker. Put one at one. Oh well, I thought I hit the red marker, but evidently I didn't. And two point what? <coughs> so this is comma one, comma what? A. And this is what? Two point five, comma what? Sixteen, right? 16 minus 8 over 2.5 minus what? 1. 16 minus 8 is 8 over 1.5. And what's 8 divided by 1.5? 1.5. 1. Did I do something wrong? I don't think I did, did I? 1 .3. to 2.5. Is it 1.3 or 5.3? 5.3. Okay. Thank you for the interaction, one person out of 16. Oh, did y'all hear the news? Y'all are going to be taken care of. We'll get rid of all student loans. Yeah, okay. Bernie. All student That money's got to come from somewhere. You know what? Those politicians must think that we as voters are dumb as dirt. They do. They think we're dumb as dirt. Oh, we'll just tell them this and they'll vote for us. They'll run out to the voting budget. Well, some of them will. <laughs> oh, yeah, some of them will. You know, Pretty Howard Stern dumb. found that out. After the voting, he, we, we went out on the on, in New York and asked a bunch of people, how would the vice president, Sarah Palin, do under Obama administration? Oh, she'll do fine. She'll do fine. <laughs> oh. I think it should be, you know what? I think it should be a law. You know, 
when you graduate high school, you serve in the military or the Peace Corps or the mission field, or you serve out of the United States for one year. That should be an amendment. But the Second Amendment should be you, you've got to be able to pass a civics test before you vote. You've got to. I mean, just no bare basics. Bare Listen. basics. Who is the vice president of the United States? Who is the president? You know, you know that kind of question. You should be able to be cognitive and sentient before you vote. Anyway, let's do another one. Is the average velocity a good estimate of the instantaneous velocity? No. Why? Because look at this graph. What does this graph have in it? Is it a straight Sorry. line or is it curves? Curves. It's curves. curves. So you got different, you got fluctuations. You could be, this guy could be, you know, climbing up a hill. This, this, uh, on a bike, is it a bicycle or something? What is it? It's just velocity. I don't know if he's running or bicyclist, okay? He could be doing all kinds of things, uh, going over a hill, going down a hill. Looks like right here, it kind of slacks off a little bit. Because that could be level, level, level uh, highway. So you can't know. And that's true on anything. The average velocity is not a good estimate of the instantaneous velocity. Okay, now find the average velocity of the bicyclist from 2 to 3.5. I'm going to let y'all do that one. From 2 to 3.5. From 2 to 3.5. Y'all like them blue dots, don't you? Y'all like that, don't you? Y'all are impressed. Yeah, Hubert, we're impressed. We don't give a crap, Hubert. Okay. Yeah, I got four. I have no idea. So we're going to do it together. Like we'll do it in blue. Y'all quit talking now. Okay. So at this point, we got 2, 16. And at this point, we've got 3.5, comma, what, 22? Just to let y'all know, what is the biggest problem that students have on this problem? Anybody want to take a guess? Besides thinking they have to do the first and second derivative. Besides that, pushing that to the side. The scale of the graph. They don't know how to read the graph. Exactly. Hmm. They'll call that, they'll, that, that second point, they'll say it's 21. <laughs> or they count the blocks because they invented graphs and they just count the blocks. You know, three blocks over and five blocks high, that's the slope. Can't do that. They go 22 minus 16 over 3.5 minus 2. They go 6 over 1.5. They go 4. That's what I got. So don't feel bad if you get confused on this type of problem in a calculus class, because a lot of people do, and all you have to do is take the what? The slope. And do I put that on the test? Yes. Why do I do that? Because I'm a bastard? No. I do it because you need to know the difference between the average and the instantaneous. Average is just a 25 cent word for slope. And I'll get to y'all in just a minute if I could ever get the whiteboard to work. Estimate the velocity of the bicyclist at 0.5 hours. You might as well forget this because a lot of people just, what do y'all do on this one? Skip it? Yeah, Hubert. No, Hubert. I tried to do it, Hubert. Well, thank you for the interaction. Appreciate it. That interaction helps a lot. Makes the class go by a whole lot faster. Yeah, it tends to. That's what I thought. We're still taking the slope, right? We're still taking what? The slope. Yeah, we go, but I'm showing you what to do. Because well, you don't have a function, so you can't use calculus. 
and I can't grab onto this line because I can't shoot bubble gum at the same time. So I'm gonna put a slope, a tangent line right there that's tangent to that point right there. Now, is this gonna be exact? No, but you're gonna have to do the best you can, okay? And I see two points, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna color that. You know, let's see if I can did this before. But I guess I can't now. I was going to change the color. Hold on. I thought I could change the color of it, but I guess I can't. One of these days I'm going to get training. I thought you could hit the color and change the color of it. I guess I'm wrong. <coughs> Okay, y'all get the point. There's a tangent line. I'm going to take two points. Now, am I going to pick points that are in between the blocks, or am I going to pick points that are at the corners of the blocks? I'm going to pick points that are at the corner of the blocks, like that one right there. I'm going to pick those two points right there. Now, let's look at it. This point is 4, 26. Okay, I just hit that blue thing twice, but evidently I'm 4, 26. And I'm going to pick this one, 2 and 12. So that's going to give us 26 minus 12 over 4 minus 2. 26 minus 12 is what? 14. 14. And 4 divided by 2 is what? 2 or 4 minus 2, so that's 7. So I'd probably go with 8. Now, why is mine off? Because you can be off, but I don't think you're going to get 58. You can forget 58 because that's not going to work. Okay. Can you tell us the direction at first? Or I'm sorry, it? what? We're going west. That's the east. I'm sorry, what What did you ask? What, what, um, what direction did they start at? Maybe? I didn't even look. But I know it has to do with positive and negative. Hold on. Because if it's still positive, it's just going to be the same. So you can just eliminate two. I'm trying to get to the question. The company graph shows the position of black after T. Assume that the S is positive when the bicyclist is east of his starting point. Ah, OK. When the bicyclist is east of his starting point. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking it would be, I may be wrong, seven, well, may, okay, I didn't see, is there another eight? I can't see because I can't get the God bless the thing to work. Okay, there it is. I'm sorry. Eight to the east, correct? Yeah. There we go. I, I didn't see it. Okay. <clears throat> now, why would it not be to the east? It would not be to the east because it'd be a negative. it would be negative. It would not work out right. Describe the movement of the bicyclist. All right, I'm going to let y'all read that, but it takes a break. He takes a break about halfway through, doesn't he? Yep. So let me let me look at it and show you. I hate when I think and I can't do things. Okay, right in here. <coughs> right in there, he There's takes no a break. Is that a break or is he just going to constant? Well, he's, kind of, he's still moving. He's just yeah. not increasing in what? Speed. So when you're a bicyclist, if you're not increasing in speed, you're taking a what? Break. A break. That's what you're doing. You're taking a break. If you're not speeding up or slowing down, you're kind of just moving along. You're not you're not trying very hard. So which one is it takes a break? And that's I think it's that's speed. about what? Our hour 
hour and three quarters, you know, hour and 45 minutes or two hours right here. He takes a break for about 30 minutes. Which one does it say he takes a break? I think it's D. And he's going, he's riding to the east, right? So that would be D. So let's hit D and check answer. Now, how much percent would you say this is calculus? Zero. Well, I would give it 1% because you're putting the tangent line right down there. That's about 1%. Zero is good enough. But this problem gets a lot of people in calculus class because it's relying on nothing but your algebra skills. Capiche? Capiche. That means that's Italian for understand. I don't know if y'all knew that or not. Question on that. Okay, this is what we're going to do. <coughs> we are going to pull up the test tomorrow, and I'll go over any homework questions you got tomorrow, and chances are I will assign the test tomorrow. Does that sound good for everybody? Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. Now, this is the first test. I will probably finish the logarithm, which is not very difficult, and what was the other section? Exponentials? I think it was exponentials. I can't remember. I, I will do those last couple of three sections before Friday, and I'll assign that test. Still giving y'all a few days to do both of them, okay? Sounds good. All right, let me get the roll, and then y'all can skedaddle. Okay. I think we got some people out today. Okay, Hit, Roland, Sterling, and Swords are all here. Okay, y'all can go. And this is the Anderson campus. Barnes is here. Brock, I don't think Brock is here today. Diaby's not here today. The tail is here, Rudiger is here, Story is not here today. Okay, and the Pendleton campus. Pendleton campus, Bryson. Here. Castles is here, Greco is here, Gusmus is here, Howell is here, Underwood is here, Williams. Not here. All right. Y'all have a good day, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. You too.